Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 255 of Category 5 Technology TV. Hey, Jot. Nice to see you in the chat room. Pointing's rude. That's what he says. Mm. Hey, everybody. Uh, Yeah, it's Tuesday, August the 7th, 2012. Krista Wells joining me in the studio. I'm Robbie Ferguson. Hey, everyone. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I was looking at uh, kind of the back feed on our website, category5.tv. I couldn't believe 10 weeks since you were here last. Oh, it's been a while. How did that happen? Where have the last 10 weeks gone? Like, that's the summer. I've been avoiding you, so it's been working well till now. Yeah, yeah. No, this whole school thing has got me wrapped up in everything, but two weeks left. And I'm Two done. weeks left, done. so then she'll be here every Tuesday. Oh, yep. How fantastic is that? Isn't it nice how I can volunteer you? For I know, just like that. Work? I know everyone's heard it, so now it has to happen. It has to happen, because what you see on the internet is true. Yep. Everything online is true. Especially if it makes it to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> Tonight, I want to. We're going to be reaching into that uh, grab bag of treats. My uh, my web developer's toolkit. Uh, Ten weeks ago, we started the series. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of died off for some reason because you haven't been back since then. And we're going to be uh, tonight. We're going to be looking at image manipulation in such that we're going to be improving the uh, the speed of your website by optimizing the images that you put on your website. Excellent. So it is a very very cool tool. Good knowledge to have. So if you're at all interested in building your own website, stick around. That is going to be good knowledge anyways. And even if you dread the thought of making your own website, it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. So and stick around anyways. Yes. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And we're here. Well, I mean, and that means it's always fun. So. Second from last week in Studio B. We'll be working our way to Studio C. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Woo. hard to believe. Yeah. Well, would you like to hear what's coming up? And you know, I would personally news? love to. Um, would those you? in the chat room probably would also okay. appreciate that. Well, yeah. Then let's uh, let's give her. All right. So coming up in the newsroom, Royal Bank of Scotland is paying out 125 million pounds to its customers on account of a computer glitch. Oh, I wish I was one of those customers. I know. Is that like <laughs> on an individual basis? Come on. Do they each Come person on. get 125 Royal million Royal Bank pounds? of Canada, can you make the same kind of mess up and put a couple bucks in my account? Mm-hmm. That'd be all right. Be super helpful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Windows 8 Metro is going to be renamed due to a trademark dispute. Another mm. one. <laughs> Valve is working on Stream for Linux due to Windows 8. And Ubuntu was caught being used by the Extreme Makeover Home Edition team. Ooh. Stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. Nice. I enjoy that show once in a while. Extreme Makeover? A home I, Edition. Oh. Let's get it straight. Extreme Makeover Home. I'm sorry. Well, because don't they have like a whole bunch of different versions of the show? Because I, I think know. Extreme Makeover makes me think about like liposuction oh. and... <laughs> It's a little different. It's a little different, you know, where they build houses and stuff. Okay, okay, fair enough. But it can be a lot of fun. Interesting. You win. Looking forward to hearing about that. I wanted to say h- hello to everybody. Now, I've been away for a week. Mm-hmm. My first my first day back, literally, here are the boxes of mm-hmm. the studio that was packed up and shipped to Halliburton, Ontario, and arrived in the studio today, unpack, reset up everything in a mad dash. It was wild. <laughs> But I think we pulled it off. So, But uh, just wanted to say hello to our new viewers from Halliburton, Ontario, uh, and that area, of course. Um, we actually, I, I got a hold of this week's Highlander as well. Now, we were in the Echo last week. And you'll see in the text section, there you go, in the bottom left mm-hmm. there. Can you see that? Online Tech Show airs. Mm-hmm. And they did a nice little write-up. Uh, Mark from the paper there uh, did a write-up and took a photo. And there's Eric and I on the air from Silver Beach Developments. And that was really cool. Very thanks, cool. Thanks, Mark. And uh, thanks to uh, the local community in Halliburton, Ontario, for, for their support of our um, visit to Halliburton. I was looking forward to it big time, but uh, my kids were so excited because you turn on the radio, Canoe FM up there, 100.9, and uh, they're talking about Category 5. And All so of a sudden, their dad's a star. That's, that's kind of how yeah. it was to them. Like, <laughs> you know, my seven-year-old was like... <gasps> That's daddy. And she was like running around all excited That's about it. And cool. then they talk about it 10 <laughs> minutes later on a PSA. And it was, it was all exciting and everything. And, and it was a lot of fun to have.
have our live audience there as well. And uh, two of the people that were there, uh, Eric and Carol from, uh, now I say Moonshadows, Moonshadows is the name of their winery, okay. uh, but they have a store, uh, Maple Moon, uh, that's mm-hmm. just on Highway 118, five kilometers west of okay. Halliburton. But the reason I bring them up, uh, they're fantastic people for one thing, but I did pop into Moonshadows, the winery that's in the store, what? and I got you some kind of treat. Now open that up. Oh my goodness. You never had anything like this. I promise oh you that. Goodness. There it is. Golden this is maple. What I've been about. Maple wine. Maple Ooh. wine. You can read some I'm of the I'm really back there excited. Read it out loud. Uh, well, all of it? <laughs> no. I just didn't want, like, is nestled in Halliburton Highlands? Or yeah. do you want to know well, about what, the wine? Well, about the wine, ah, it's so actually, thought. instead of grapes, they've made it from maple syrup. From nature's springtime gold maple syrup. Very Canadian, eh? It brings sweet aromas of smoky undertones. Yeah. Ooh, I'm it's excited. Really, that's one of my favorites, I'd say. My, one of my favorite wines. Um, very, very nice. And they did a great job of that, so... Mm-hmm. There you go. Thank you. That's my little cottage treat to you. Oh, it's very sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll let everyone know how it is. <laughs> Blog about it or tweet about it. That'd oh, be a good idea. Because I don't have Twitter. <laughs> oh, see, that's a problem. Uh, that's a problem. I hmm. will maybe open a Twitter account and then <laughs> learn how to tweet. That would be an excellent idea. And then I'll tweet about it. Yeah. <laughs> So, again, greetings to all of our new viewers tonight. And, of course, not just Halliburton and and Cottage Country here in Canada, uh, in Ontario especially, but uh, we've got viewers from all over the world that are joining us tonight. I'm kind of watching the chat room, and I do see some many, many familiar faces. I see some people who um, are possibly new here. Nice to see you. Let us know if you're brand new here. Uh, A couple people who now I'm trying to see here. Let's see. I means it has been away for a while and uh, this is the first time that they've been able to catch the show live Good. in uh, just about a year so nice to have you back thanks for joining us tonight uh, let's see new to Linux yeah if I miss anybody I mean just post us in the chat room category 5 dot TV category 5 on free node and uh, do join us in the chat room it's a nice way to, for us to communicate hey Dennis Kelly New to Linux, I just wanted to say hello. Welcome to Linux. Welcome to Category 5. Welcome, welcome. Hope you enjoy both. It's kind of the idea, right? Red Nova, uh, Toby, uh, nice to see you. Hey, everybody. Chris Reich, Mm -hmm. nice to see you. Chris Reich's got a fun little game that uh, we'll we'll try to participate in tonight. How's that sound? Did I mispronounce that? Participate? Yeah. Yeah, he sounded like it was a little twangy. I was like, go ahead, Chris. Participate or something like that. (laughs) Precipitate. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, great. Good one. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Well, we've got viewer questions uh, in a couple moments. Our mobile site is m.cat5.tv. Love to have you uh, try that out. Give it a try on your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod Touch for the iDevice end of things. And then you've mm-hmm. got the Android devices are also supported. BlackBerry works great. Uh, give it a go. M.cat5.tv on any mobile device. And uh, also, I want to mention that uh, we would love to receive your postcards. Category 5 Technology TV, P.O. Box 29009. Barrie, Ontario, Canada, L4N7W7. We prefer to receive a postcard where, you know, it's, it's something of your area or mm-hmm. somewhere that you're visiting, perhaps. Sometimes we receive them, uh, you know, when, you're, when viewers are on a trip and they send it from where they are. But we really love to have you write on the postcard and stamp it and send it as a postcard. Um, that's the best way to send it, because then we get the stamp, too. Mm-hmm. And it's a little bit more special than, you know, than... It's old school stamp. Yeah, though. that stamp and everything. It really shows that it was sent old school style. <laughs> we love it. Love to receive it. And those are going to be going up on the website as well. <laughs> okay. We've got to take a quick break. I know. Okay, you go ahead. Did, yes. She's like, uh, I, but I, was, I need to. I was, I was I waiting say, for it. Did you yep. know that Category Five TV <laughs> is a member of the Tech Podcast Network? And if it's tech, it's here. You don't say. Oh, did you know that? I, if, yeah. You had no idea. <laughs> and the International <laughs> Association of Internet Broadcasters. Brilliant. Hmm. All right, we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Stick around. At Eco Alkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here. 
here and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 255. And I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. Krista, I know you've got uh, some viewer questions that we want to Oh, I have cover. a plenty of viewer questions. A plethora. <laughs> you can send in your questions to Krista live at Category5.tv. Mm-hmm. That will get uh, to the co-host desk. And, uh, and that is a great way to get your questions in. And again, join us in the chat room if you like to uh, send them in that way as well. Absolutely. All right. Our first wonderful question is coming from Invincible Mutant. Uh, hey, actually, Mutant. it looks more like a comment, but All right. we like comments too. He says, just can't help myself to stop sending you another testimonial. He <laughs> said, what a beautiful website. Well done. Thank you. Uh, I find your anti-spam method on anti-spam method, sorry, on the ask a question page interesting. It looks like a real anti-idiot method. <laughs> In fact... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the two plus two. <laughs> Enter two plus two, because if you're if you're a machine, you won't be. Able if you're to. a machine, yeah. you wouldn't be able to do it. But we do allow idiots on our website. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Once in a while, idiots get to program it too. So. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for creating fantastic work for the community. Keep it up. Well, yeah. Thanks. Cheers. Uh, Chris Reich making fun of my emphasis. Ah. Hmm. Throwing emphasis. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Oops. It's kind of a expected Robbie thing to do. Yeah, it's it's to be expected. All right, here's another question, or Excellent. I guess our first question from Brandon. Uh, he says, on episode 252, you took a look at the software to remember my passwords. But what if I want to sign up to new services and don't have a password yet? Is there any way to generate new passwords without going to that website you showed, or do I just make one up? Oh, okay. Well, I, I yeah, I typically I tend to use safe pass wd dot com to generate passwords on the fly. Mm-hmm. Really, really easy. But we were looking at KeyPass X, and let's see here. <clears throat> What'll do, Brandon? I'm just going to show you uh, how we get, go about it. And yes, it does generate passwords. And not only does it generate passwords, but it generates extremely strong ones. So uh, use safe password.com if you like to generate this the password for your database safe pass wd.com and the, the reason i say that is okay you can say easy to remember generate something that's you know 10 characters or whatever go new password and now you've got one that's like minotaur 6 see how that oh and it kind of went weird <laughs> <laughs> that happens in chrome minotaur 6 was such a cool one too but there's uh rodrik question mark 5 for example. So you just kind of memorize it. It's easier than kind of creating one of those random passwords, like the generally Mm -hmm. random passwords, but very, very hard for somebody to guess or to brute force because, um, well, it's it's pretty crazy, right? But it's not something that you remember if you name it after your dog. Or right. some people will use, you know, okay, well, I've got an Acer monitor, so I'll call it Acer 5 is my password. Password one, I'll always two, remember it. three. And yeah. then what's funny is you, your monitor dies, you replace it with an IBM, and then oh, you, can't you remember forget your password. Your password. <laughs> so I say that just because, okay, this will generate, okay, so I've got Rodrik 5, right? So with a question mark. So I could enter that in, and then you're good to go. So that's your password for the database file. Okay, so now as you create new uh, new passwords within, well, let's see here. So I'm, I'm going to create one. Say I'm going to create a login for Category 5. So let's call this Category 5 username. We'll just say Krista because we'll, we'll pretend that it's you doing it. Ooh. I type really fast. You really do. You're amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and you can actually go login.category5.tv if you really want to. So password, let's see here. Now there are some pretty cool tools. Let's see, gen. See that gen button over here? I'm going to click on that. Now it's going to say, whoa, what do you want? Okay, <laughs> and it's created one automatically for 164 bits. You can increase that 
by increasing the length of the password. Remember that, like, look at that. I mean, th 321 bits for your password. That's incredible. Like, nobody's ever going to guess at that, r realistically. Um, you can set up pronounceable passwords if you want to memorize them. But here's the thing. Because we're generating a password that is going to be stored electronically within KeePassX, the software that ha holds a database in an encrypted database, mm -hmm. we can use these crazy, long, absurd passwords for the websites that we subscribe to. If you want to set up a Twitter account, for example, you use this, you've got a 328-bit password. Mm -hmm. That you can never remember. You'll never remember it, but you remember <laughs> that main password that you set up for key pass right, X, right? right. Okay. And then that allows you to then retrieve that password or have it automatically populate right. the form that logs you in. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Cool. So back at this screen, now I've generated uh, a password that's 328 bits, or I've told it to do that. Okay, and now generate. And there's my password, it's just, you know, asterisk out. Hit okay. And okay, there we go. So now I've got a password that's ready for me that is, you know, that many bits, 320 some odd bits. I can click on the little eye icon there. See that little eye? That lets me see the password so that I can oh, copy goodness. and paste it. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> crazy. So just single click anywhere in there and hit control A to, to highlight the whole thing. Control C to copy it. And then you go back to the website that you're subscribing to. And I'm just going to paste this into Gedit just to show you. Pasting that in. Let's see if I got it in my clipboard here. Right click copy. I'll do that. There it is. So there's my wild password that, you know, good luck guessing at that. So now, yeah, Brandon, I've, I've created a password that is incredibly secure. Mm -hmm. It's memorized only in my software database. I'm never going to remember that password and generate a new password for every single website that you go to. So if you sign up for Twitter, make sure it's a different password than Facebook, than your email, than... Pa uh, PayPal, because mm -hmm. we talked about this on a on a previous show, uh, where you know if if somebody hacked, let's say somebody hacked the Hotmail server mm -hmm. and you're using Hotmail and they got your password, it can happen. Or and then all of a sudden, if it's the same password as your banking account, right now they they've can got access. They can log into your bank account. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's it's dangerous stuff. So that's where KeyPass X and being able to generate these crazy passwords is a fantastic thing. And then you just do the same thing for the next one. Next website you sign up to, you create a new yep. entry. Just keep on going. Boom. There you go. Next website. And just create a new crazy password. So. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> this is Category 5 Technology TV, and I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Crystal Wells. Yeah. <laughs> Hope that helps. What else you got for me? Oh, There's more questions there, right? Of course I do. All right. Uh, let's see. This one is from Phil. Hey, Phil. So, Phil says, hello, Robbie. I enjoy watching your show on several of my devices, inclu including the iOS. iOS? Hey, yeah. The iOS. <laughs> Set-top box cool. that you reviewed a while back. Mm -hmm. I can never get any of my five TiVos units to accept the RSS feed for Category5.tv, so I suggested to TiVo that they add your show to the list mm -hmm. uh, of podcasts, and I received an email stating that it would be done by the end of that day. Ooh. Cool. Nice. True to their word, one day later, and I am watching episode 252 with my Series 3 TiVo on my 42-inch LG TV. Nice. The there you go. <laughs> the happy birthday episode. Uh, how appropriate. Very cool stuff. Um, speaking of the iOS, the mm -hmm. iOS is the, the nice little device that we reviewed previous to the Zios. All these <laughs> yosses. Um, but the Zios is the one that I reviewed last week. The iOS <laughs> is by the same people. Pivos. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> folks, I love your products, but the naming, it gets really confusing when I'm trying to explain it. Mm -hmm. um, the iOS <laughs> device, dude, go onto their website, get the new firmware. I've, I've been running the beta firmware. Uh, now, I know a couple of you actually went out and possibly several of you went out and bought an iOS device. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people were even saying during the, re the review that the interface seemed a little bit clunky, mm -hmm. totally functional, but was a little bit slow at, at times was a little bit, you know, orange, oh. very, very orange. Mm -hmm. The new interface is, is so zippy. Uh, you just uh, download the firmware to a flash drive, put it in, turn on your iOS, and it automatically updates. It's fantastic. Good. But gave me some new features, and they're working on some amazing stuff for the new version. Um, so if you've got an iOS, give it a go. Give it a try to the, uh, the new firmware. Uh, I think it's in, like, pre-release beta right now. It's been working okay. perfectly for me. So 
That's good. Fantastic. Yeah, and thanks for mentioning that to uh, to TiVo as well. So it looks like we're back on the TiVo. We used to be on TiVo with uh, Blip.TV, mm-hmm. and then that got pulled. So TiVo viewers, that's when that's when um, Category 5 disappeared. And that's the other thing that's tough when you're a show like ours, because we do tap into third-party services. So I would assume that TiVo is now actually launching uh, our alternate feed, which is the one that we created for people to get around things like right. blip.tv. Because if we go through third parties like blip, mm-hmm. and then those third parties get removed from TiVo, then you get removed. we get removed mm-hmm. inadvertently. So once again, the alt feed has uh, helped us out there, I suppose, to reach more, more viewers. Keep in mind that, uh, and, I, uh, and this will lead up to my thanks to many viewers who have supported us, but do keep in mind that the alt feeds, so watching us on TiVo, um, will not uh, help us pay the bills because you're actually circumventing our advertising network by using those feeds. So, mm-hmm. so we encourage viewers uh, that use those feeds to, to donate and help us with the, with the expenses here. Uh, and like I say, to that to lead up, the, you know, I wanted to say thank you to, uh, to viewers who have donated us this week, uh, to us this week, and you know who you are, and, and uh, your support is really what makes the show possible. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, he did actually post a link here to the oh, yeah. TiVo's, um, so if you wanted to post very it somewhere cool. later, that would Yeah, can I post cool. that? I'll post that in the show notes uh, for episode number 255. So if you're watching this after the fact, go to our website, category5.tv, go to episode number 255 as part of season five, and uh, you'll be able to click that link to check out the TiVo link that uh, that was provided there. Great. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Oh, we have time for one more? Yeah. Woo-hoo. Here's a question from Dennis. Uh, hi, Robbie. Hey, Dennis. I have switched from Ubuntu 12.04 to Xubuntu 12.04. Zubuntu. Zubuntu, sure. That's what I meant. My problem Chris is Reich? that I can't... <laughs> yeah, just playing into his game. Oh. Playing into the game. <laughs> <laughs> My problem is that I can't get surround sound working. I have NVIDIA graphics card with HDMI output. I have hooked my PC up to my AV receiver. Back when using Windows, I had no problem to have the surround sound working the way it should. In Ubuntu, it worked just fine. Now in Zubuntu, only the front left and front right speakers are playing. I have set to 5.1 via Mm. HDMI and the sound settings in the OS. I really don't know how to search for an answer since I tried nearly everything in Pulse Audio settings or whichever is standard in Zubuntu. And, oh, I think as an art question, maybe we'll figure okay, this out well, first. Okay, well, I think, yeah, and that's, that's a little tricky for me, but um, I think you're probably going to want to go with Alsa, uh, Alsa Mixer for the HDMI stuff because Pulse is not going to be able to get... The problem is, is that I think Pulse is not going to see how many speakers you have hooked up. So it may just be sending like a left and right signal, in which case you can edit some files and go through some settings in order to configure... Pulse Audio to like through configuration files to to use 5.1 or 7.1 channels. Uh, let's see what I can come up with here. Uh, just through some quick searching. Um, askubuntu.com is always an excellent resource. Um, great website for Ubuntu users, and of course, Zubuntu is based on Ubuntu. So at the core, it's the same system. So you're you're still good to do some of these things. So First thing I come up with on askubuntu.com is this question about configuring 5.1 audio in 12.04. So sim- maybe a similar setup and similar problem to what you're having. I'm just kind of scrolling through with, with you here. And, and this is one of those things, and I can tell just from, the f- from this thread, y- you see what I notice is that you know, you've got this guy said, okay, well, this will fix it. This one said, this will fix it. Here's the you know the answer that was accepted, which is to connect through SPDIF, uh, which is kind of a workaround, if you ask me. Um, and then here's another one that said, oh, well, this actually fixed it for me. So I think what happens is, is that then you get into, here's a problem that for everybody is a little bit different solution because it's a different, maybe a different, it's same symptom, but a little bit different uh, cause of that symptom. I think probably what you're going to encounter is that it is just, you know, out of the box, sending left and right. So it's going to take some manual configuration to get all six channels, 5.1 or 7.1, to, to work. So I'll, I'll send you that that uh, that page, create a quick, uh, quick link for you. So what I'll do is cat5.tv slash HDMI51 for 5.1. 
There you go. So hopefully that thread will give you a little bit of help. I hope that one of those solutions will help you. Uh, we're working here at Category 5. I'm, I'm working on something very, very cool uh, with uh, TeamSpeak. Hmm. Or not TeamSpeak. What am I saying? Uh, Team Viewer. Ah. <laughs> Taking me back to it's my... I, I, as I'm packing up the studio, I'm coming across Unreal Tournament Discs, Game of the Year edition. And I'm, I'm thinking uh, along the 1999 TeamSpeak and Unreal Tournament game land. I'm reminiscing. <laughs> Team Viewer allows us to actually remote, <laughs> pardon me, remote into viewers' computers and perhaps help you with some of these issues. That's something that we're working on. Um, and on our website, cat5.tv slash ask, or if you go to category5.tv, interact and ask a question, you'll see that there's a little button that uh, says, do you want Robbie to be able to access your computer? And, and maybe in this kind of a case, uh, because this is all part of, I really want to be able to help you with this stuff. It's really tough because it could be a different problem mm -hmm. for everybody. So my suggestions may not work for you. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm really kind of stuck saying, okay, well, here's a thread. Here are some people with the same problem. Hopefully one of their answers right. helps you. Um, but hopefully uh, down the road as well, we'll be able to actually remote into your computer using TeamViewer. And, uh, and I might be able to be of more assistance to you, the viewers, uh, in that regard. So, so give that a try, somebody, if you, if you want to give it a go. And mm -hmm. And uh, we'll probably be launching that, um, you know, within the next couple months. It's really a season six feature that we're going to be introducing. But um, so that to say, mm -hmm. sorry, I can't cool. be. Yeah, sorry, I can't be too much help at this point with that kind of a problem. But Alsa Mixer is, is from Terminal is a great, you know, go through. Just double check if there are any muted channels. If you've got like uh, your SPDIF outputs muted or HDMI outputs muted. Give that a go, um, but otherwise, uh, I think maybe that will, hopefully that'll help you. Cat5.tv slash HDMI51 will take you to that Ask Ubuntu uh, thread there. Good. Hopefully it helps. Yeah. yeah. Here's hoping. Uh, we have time for the second part? Oh, yes. Okay. The second part. Um, right. It says, you mentioned an ID3 tag editor for Linux to edit all the tags in the folder at once. Uh, what was its name again? I tried to find the episode where that was mentioned in last week without success. What was its name? Um, <laughs> what a well, what good I question. can do? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Taking me back. I think it was Easy Tag. Uh, but let's go to our website, category5.tv. I'm going to show you some really, really cool features about our website here. One of the things that we have that's not quite as pretty as I want it to be. It's pretty. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you're a graphic designer, so you know what I'm saying. Well, it's like, I don't say things like pretty, though. Well, I mean, that's Well, I do, because I want Chris Reich to enjoy himself. Right. Yeah. So, um, something that I will cosmetically be working on, but right now it's not mm -hmm. a huge priority. So, really functionality-wise, it is there. Okay. So, I'll show you this quick little thing. It's, it's called Search Our Network right on the right hand side of our website and there because you know you have an idea of what you're searching for just type in id3 and it's going to actually go through our entire network of sites and it's going to do a quick search and here's where it's you know it's kind of ugly but uh, it will be incorporated into the site so you know I instantly it's shown you here's a question how do i set id3 tags on my music in linux particularly multiple songs at once with common information using easy tag there, I, I, so I was right there, to add ID3 tags to your music, both manually and automatically, from the file names. So you see, just by a simple search of ID3 on our website, we were able to pull up exactly what it is that you're looking for. And then I'm going to click on that. It's going to take me to episode number 218, featuring the wonderful Krista Wells. And there, we actually talked about Easy Tag, just a part way into the show. All right. Good. That's really handy. Yeah. That's, uh, if you want to, you know, jump right to it, it's search.category5.tv, or again, on our website, category5.tv, anywhere on the right-hand side on any page, you'll see Search Our Network, and you can just type in your, your search there. And that goes through our, everything from category5.tv to the newsroom, to the forums, to mm -hmm. the wiki, to YouTube, all of that That's stuff great. is included in that search. So if, if it's out there and it's done by Category 5, you should be able to find it using mm -hmm. Search Our Network, so hope that helps and that is a great program and we don't need to review it tonight because it's already there and i just showed you how to get it <laughs> and it would be it would mess with your mind too because it's the same presenters tonight different shirt you'll have no idea i think we did a costume change and came back yeah exactly 
How's my hair in that one? Oh, phew. Oh, good. My hair looks really good in that one. It's very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. (laughs) (laughs) I'm having a little pity party or something. That's good. Oh, well. Okay. (laughs) Christy, you ready? Oh, as I'm going to be. All right. All right. Here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. Royal Bank of Scotland, RBS, has put aside £125 million to pay compensation to customers affected by a recent breakdown in its computer systems. Accountant, or sorry, account holders at RBS and its NatWest and Ulster Bank subsidiaries face disruption for up to two weeks in June after a software upgrade at the bank. Ouch. RBS released the compensation figure as it reported a half-year loss of £1.5 billion compared with £794 million a year earlier. Two weeks of no service at a bank? Yeah, that's a little brutal. Are they owned by RIM? Yeah. (laughs) That's a low blow. Low blow. Low blow. (laughs) Ooh. A potential trademark dispute has forced Microsoft to drop the Metro name for Windows 8 for Windows 8's blocky tile-based interface. Just well, the name, eh? Well, it's not <laughs> entirely clear. It is believed that the trademark is held by German retail giant Metro AG. Oh, Microsoft is currently working out what to call the interface and said the new name will be announced soon. Ooh, we can I think they already hit the nail wait. on the head. <laughs> Windows 8's blocky interface. That's a good one. That works. Mm-hmm. I can yeah. just see the commercials now, too. So I wish somebody yeah. like, maybe Tetris could sue them and say, <laughs> hey, you're... That's our blocky that's interface. That's our blocky interface. <laughs> you can't use it. So switch back to something that actually mm. is good. Oh, poor Windows. Oh, I know, poor Windows. Mm. They make bad choices. <laughs> Uh, with games developers like Valve and Blizzard espre- expressing concerns about Windows 8, the once unshakable grasp of DirectX is starting to look a little weak. Valve, in particular, has started has sorry started looking seriously at Linux as a gaming platform, which means Linux, uh, ooh, which means focusing on polishing up the OpenGL performance of its source graphics engine, having reading problems tonight. It now has a whole team working on getting both source and Steam and both source and Steam running nicely with Ubuntu. They've been blogging, and in their latest update, they've outlined some of the advancements they've made with performance. While working closely with Nvidia, who has something to prove after Linux creator Li- Linus Linus. Torvalds yeah. uh, publicly dissed its attitude to Linux. The team has managed to polish up its engine so that Left 4 Dead 2 actually runs faster in Linux than it does in Windows. If Steam becomes a Linux-friendly game dis- distribution system, we may well see Linux becoming a key gaming platform by the big-name studios. That's huge. Oh. That's great. And it's kind of the moment that we've all been waiting for with Valve bringing Steam to Linux. That's a big deal. Mm. That's like an amazing distribution mechanism for gaming. So I've always thought that Linux was great for games. Wolfenstein, Good. yeah, Castle Wolfenstein <laughs> and stuff and Quake games and everything that's that's out there. Unreal Tournament ran great on Linux. Better than on Windows. There you go. Thanks Andrew Jameson for that gaming story. Gaming master. Well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Extreme Makeover Home Edition is a television series centered around a family that, after being confronted with unfortunate life situations, receives a completely rebuilt house, usually while the family members are on vacations. As seen in this picture, the Extreme Home team is using Ubuntu on their desktop with Unity, placing Ubuntu publicly in yet another just conquered area. Very cool. Ooh, nice hairdo. Get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our wonderful community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email to newsroom at category5.tv. From the category5.tv newsroom, I am Krista Wells. Thank you, Krista. And done. Done. Just so you know, there's a a rule around here that anytime you mispronounce something, you just give it to Chris. Oh, okay. Just let him take it. Yeah. Just let him take it. Good. We'll so. announce it in the chat room. No problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tonight's show is brought to you in part by Cordery Electric Contracting, Inc. You can find out more about them at CorderyElectric.com. They're the official electrical company of Category 5 Technology TV and a great bunch of guys as well. So check them out, CorderyElectric.com. Also, Netflix. Get your free one-month trial of Netflix at Cat5.tv slash Netflix. And one of the things that somebody, uh, a lot of people have been saying to me, well, can't you get a free free account anyways just by going to their website 
Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may. But if you go to cat5.tv slash Netflix, it's the same thing. You get a one-month free trial of Netflix, no obligation. You can cancel before the end of the month. There's no charge. Or you keep going, and it's like seven, mm -hmm. eight bucks a month Canadian. So, but it helps Category 5 at the same time when you do it through us. Cat5.tv slash Netflix. Mm -hmm. And you won't want to cancel anyways. I personally have no. Netflix. It's fantastic. How do you like it? I love it. Yeah? Yeah. I find myself hardly watching like a regular TV anymore. I can't stand commercials anymore. <laughs> commercials. Down with commercials. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Netflix has none. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like popping in the DVD. It's like yeah. buying the, you know, the season discs of all your favorite shows and movies yeah. galore. So I've That's caught great. a lot of classic stuff yes. as well that I didn't know about. So we're still in, we just started season two of Sliders. Oh, I That's haven't been watched a lot of fun. it yet. It's been a lot of fun. You should catch up to us. Hmm. It's probably easy to do, <laughs> watching TV and working at the same time. <laughs> uh, Krista. <laughs> okay, well, I mentioned that we want to take a look at some free stuff. Yes. Uh, the ability to uh, do some image manipulation. We're going to start with uh, quick manipulation and then work our way into uh, making our website run faster by uh, optimizing the images that we're going to be using there. Really good information. And, uh, <laughs> hey, John. And we're going to uh, we're gonna also show you how to do some editing using GIMP as well. Uh, GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's freely available. GIMP.org. Krista loves it when I talk about the GIMP. Mm-hmm. She's a Photoshop I groupie. I will admit, it's... Uh, it's impressive. It is, yes. Thank you. It can be a little daunting when you look at their website, and it's kind of, they've made it look like a blog. So forget about all that stuff and skip over it and go all the way down to the bottom, and you'll see downloads Unix or Linux, Windows, Mac OS X. So you've got access to installing this on your computer absolutely free. So it doesn't matter what platform you're using. Here is a Photoshop alternative. You've heard of Photoshop. Here's a free one that you can get. There's a download, <coughs> pardon me, a download button right up at the top as well. There you go which auto it seems to automatically detect what operating system you're doing. So, freely available. Krista herself said that it is, what was the word? Exceptional? Did awesome. I say exceptional? Well, you know, I like putting I words in your mouth. I don't think I said exceptional. It's pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. I think I kind of cut off the sentence and you finished it okay. for me. Yeah, I do that. Um, <laughs> GIMP 2.8 is really pushing the envelope, bringing GIMP more toward a commercial-style platform. It has a uh, single window mode as well, which if you're migrating from Photoshop or you've used Photoshop, it makes it a lot easier for you to make that transition. So tonight, I'm actually, I'm not using 2.8. I've just got 2.6 on this system because I haven't upgraded just yet. Mm. Uh, I'm on uh, Zorin OS, and I'll just load up GIMP 2.6 here. There we go. So I've got multi-window mode. There we are. Move that guy over to that screen. There we go. So one of the questions that I've received or that people, you know, I talk to people behind the scenes and, and uh, talk about, you know, how we do some of the things that we do here at Category 5. One person actually came into the studio and, and saw the brick wall behind me and said, oh, you, you don't have, uh, where's, the, where's the sign? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, <laughs> the Cat Where's five. the sign? Because if you go to our right. website, Category5.tv, let's bring it up. You'll see that most of the time, it's just light boxed right now. There you go. Mm -hmm. You see that it looks like Category 5 is kind of painted on the wall. You know, there it is there. Quite often, they, you know, sometimes it looks even more realistic than others. But we always have our logo, our wonderful logo, I should say, behind our heads. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's not actually there. It's that Robbie wears this Category 5.TV hat. It's an amazing hat. Uh -huh. I love wearing it around town. And it's just like a halo, and it just like... <laughs> category 5 Look at me. I'm Robbie Ferguson. <laughs> and that's how it's done. <laughs> yeah. No, so we actually just do a quick little photo manipulation after the show. And it's, seriously, somebody said to me, oh, you don't have a sign behind your heads? They thought it was actually on the brick wall. Um, so then I said, you haven't actually watched an episode, have you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you would have noticed. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, so I'm going to grab a real quick picture from our uh, repository of stuff that we have here. Let's see. All right. Actually, there's so many folders. My I know, goodness. But they're all so well organized. Yes, well. 
I'll grab. I don't know, any screen grab of any episode. Probably <laughs> already saved over all of them. Okay, let's go back here. We'll use a full res image. I, I'd prefer to use one that greatly embarrasses Krista. Oh, of course. Those aren't hard <laughs> to come by. <laughs> I am really embarrassed by that photo. You should use that one. Yeah. I want to find a good one here. Bear with me, folks. I'm just bringing up random photos from the show here. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Well, it'd be nice if it was... Okay, well, I can... If it was perfect. I can use one with somebody else, for sure. There's Eric looking all smiles. Why don't we use that one? Because it actually shows the iOS, which we were perfect. talking about. That's the device that we were talking about a little bit earlier. So if I right-click on that, open with GIMP Image Manipulation Program. There it is. Okay. So then all I need is the logo, which is stored on our server. There we go. So this is uh, just a, a ping file, I guess, that mm -hmm. you had sent us when you created the logo so that we had something to work with that had a transparent layer. So I'm just going to copy that logo into my clipboard. Actually, I'll auto crop just to show you that cool little feature. Image, auto crop image is part of GIMP, and it actually sucks everything in so that uh, you don't have to try to figure out where the edges of the image are. So looking at my image here, what I would normally do is I would, uh, okay, well, I'd say that's 3,072 pixels wide. My logo right now is 4,000 something. So I want it to be about, I don't know, two-thirds of the canvas size, somewhere around there. Why don't I just say 1,000 pixels width on this? So I've shrunk the logo, copied it to my clipboard, pasted it in. And create a new layer to make it so that it's manipulatable, uh, separate from that layer. Might have made it bigger than that, but doesn't really matter for the sake of the demonstration. So now with, with the GIMP, what I'll do is zoom right in there with my plus key on the keyboard, and then turn off that layer. So now I can still see the outline of where that layer is going to be. And I simply use the marquee tool up at the top left here. See that free select, they call it? And I'm just going to click around my head, just like that. And it does a really excellent job. And here, Krista, you're, you're going to see this, and you're going to say, well, you can do that in Photoshop, no problem. And I've shown this before, but one of the things I love about this is if I accidentally go like that, somebody bumps my hand or whatever, Photoshop can be a, a nightmare when that happens, because you generally have to go back and redo what you've done. Here, as you point to things, it actually creates the point again. You can see if I go over here, now I can move any of these points. So that is a really, really nice feature of GNU Image Manipulation Program. Let's me get in nice and tight to the scalp. There you go. Better than a Mach 3. <laughs> All right, so now I've got that highlighted. I can turn back on that layer. Select Inverse. So now what's actually happened is everything but my head is selected. Okay, and now I'm going to right-click on the layer and go Add Layer Mask from selection, and then it's actually brought my head forward in the picture. So now that's what it looks like. Okay. So now just playing around with you know opacities, and you can try, for example, multiply it. You could try screening it. You can just go through just by using your arrow keys. So usually what I'll do is I'll just click on the layer style and then press my down arrow just like that until I find one that, because it's, it, it differs depending on the lighting, but we'll find one that really looks quite nice. I'd say grain merge looks pretty good. Bring down the uh, opacity just a little bit, and then there you go. So we've got this image there. Okay. So now, if I were to take that photo, let's say that this is going to go on my website, so I'm going to crop it, and I'm going to file, save as, Let's throw it on my desktop, and we're going to call this, I'll just call it test.jpg, export as JPEG. We'll save it at 90% quality just to see how big that is. And there it is. That's 1.1 megabytes. So that's more than 
Oh, because I've still got this at 2648 by 1696. So keep in mind, now what's one of the rules of web images? What, save to size? The size <laughs> of the image, right? Because if you've got a, a 2600 pixel image, great for print, but if you put that on a website, it, either you're going to have to Huge. Sh shrink it down by, um, by browser, basically, mm -hmm. by specifying the width and height of the image. But then it is still a huge image, and then you've got a, you know, the browser is shrinking it down just fine, usually lossy, like you're going to lose a lot of quality, but uh, it, it can be done that way. The better way to do it, though, is to do that in your image manipulation program. So I would say, okay, let's say I want this to be uh, 640 pixels wide and 410 pixels high. So I'm actually resizing the image first so that this is the actual image size. So now if I save that again, let's see what my file size is, 90.1 kilobytes. There we go. So looks pretty good. There's the image that I'm going to be using. But it's 90.1 kilobytes, so it is a fairly mm -hmm. substantial amount to add to your website because let's say somebody is connecting with a you know light, high-speed service. They have to basically download everything that's on your website that is going to be displayed on that page first and foremost, and then it will display in their browser or it will do it kind of in a gradual way. Mm -hmm. So if you have you know 90K is not a huge big deal, but if you have 15 images... All of a sudden, you know, it's pretty substantial as far as the download size of that website. So mm -hmm. one of the things as a web developer that that we must do is tap into compression technologies and ways to uh, make things smaller and faster. So I'm going to go to cat5.tv slash web dev. And we're going to use a cool little online tool from my toolbox. Scroll down a little ways and you'll see make things faster. We've got a couple of things here. The first one is online image optimizer. That's what we're going to use tonight. And the second one, of course, is a YUI compressor that you can use online. That takes JavaScript and CSS and minifies it so that it's a lot faster as well, again, making things smaller. So we're going to click on this. It takes us to dynamic drive. Very cool little system here. All we have to do is just choose our file, go to our desktop, grab that 90.1K file, and click on optimize. And what it's actually going to do is it's going to show me there's my original image, and it's 90.1 kilobytes. Scroll down a little bit more. There is one that is at 90. Okay, that's not giving me any savings. W what I'm actually doing here is comparing quality visually. So can you tell the difference between that one and that one? No, I can't. Can I tell the difference between that one and that one? No, I can't. What you'll see is that over here, here's quality, it's actually 66.2 kilobytes for that one. Or the next one, which I still can't tell the difference in quality, is 50.2 kilobytes. So then keep going until you find one that actually looks like it is compressed. And then you're going to start seeing blocky artifacts. You can see my teeth there are starting to get a little bit of a blockiness, right? Do you see that too? Mm -hmm. So I would scroll up a little bit to this one and say, okay, well, this one doesn't have any blocky artifacts. It looks pretty good. And it's only 38K. So I'm actually cutting down the image size by 57%. So now what I can do is I can save that image, pop it back on my desktop, and save it. And now that's going to actually be the image that I put on my website. So here's my original, 90.1K. All right. And now bring up the next one at 38K. There it is. So 91K, it's actually there. 30K. There's big one, small one. Can you tell the mm -hmm. difference? You can a bit, but I mean, it's for very what you're going to notice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the tricks that we use here at Category 5 is to compress images in that method. Um, and that's a you know, good resource for, for you to get started anyways. Um, so it's cat5.tv slash webdev cool stuff there uh, lots of other tips and tricks mm -hmm. and cool 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 mm -hmm. is it cool it's cool. cool are you interested in this kind of thing what me yeah oh well web stuff yeah mm. not at all not at all you like the design work i, I, these, I actually really I like the web cool. stuff too so yeah. these are cool i don't know if you can see that there, there's our new business card that krista did up for us but how cool is that it's so, cooler in person. Yeah, thanks, buddy. It is way cooler in person. <laughs> On your screen, it's not nearly as cool. Mm -hmm. The textile nature of textile. Uh, tactile. Nature. Tactile, that's the word. Like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Any questions uh, at this point? 
Uh, me personally, no. I wonder if... Uh, In the chat room? Hey, Jot. Rev D. Jenkins. This is Category 5 mm -hmm. Technology TV, and you'll find our website at www.category5.tv. Also, we are on Twitter. You'll see down uh, below Krista there, Category 5 TV on Twitter. Uh, please follow us. And, uh, of course, I've got my own personal Twitter <laughs> as well that uh, you can find through that. Cool. Cool. Any questions that you found? Um, nothing, actually, about this, but Garby wants to know how the end of your vacation was. How the end of my vacation yes. was? It's tough because, you know, we actually wrapped up a little bit ahead of time. Usually we'd stay a little bit longer. But mm -hmm. this year, because we've got the move coming up, and literally, like, uh, we, we take possession at the new place Monday. Mm -hmm. So that means next Tuesday is going to be our last show in this studio. And we are actually, I don't, you, you can look around, the viewers mm -hmm. can't really see. Maybe you on Backstage Pass, you can see a little bit. But we're a little bit makeshifted right now. Because everything is, yeah. you know, is literally being packed or packed or gone or transported or whatever. Um, we're really working hard to, to get that done. So, so I actually came home early so that we could get some packing done and, and all that kind of Good. stuff. So, but yeah, it's all necessary, right? But the vacation was great. It was nice to get away and back to work tomorrow. So. Oh, sucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it in a way. But, and it's nice that I've got a three-day work week. Ahead. Oh, so it's super short. So you know, like really kind of ease my way into it. The first day is horrible. It. You can yeah. go mm, just two first day. I'm really left. expecting a lot of email and you know all that right. kind of stuff. Filtering through. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, on a on a Monday, typically I I spend uh, way more time than I want going just sifting through email right. and sorting through email and responding to people. And you know, some are are questions that you know really take some considerations to to answer. And so after being away for just a little more than a week, it's yeah. it's going to be quite an adventure for sure yeah what's that garby about mysql yeah so hmm. yeah no questions in the chat room any questions for us we've got a few minutes left here on the show and of course if you're new here uh, you can join our website category5.tv uh, also send in your questions live at category5.tv love to get them Rev D. Jenkins is wondering if you have backed up your Mac. Um, yes, I actually do on a regular basis. Yeah, and wh what's your method of doing um, that? Actually, everything's on my external. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also have, for my working files, I also have uh, backed up onto DVDs. So I have double backup just in case. So you're you're backing. So it, it, when you say it's on your external, is it is that the only copy? That plus my plus my, your DVDs. Yes. Okay. Is that bad? Well, <laughs> how, how big is the hard drive in your Mac? Like, do you have room that you could store some of the stuff on the actual hard drive and then I do, use the external I as a backup? I do keep or? it, some of the stuff, but the thing is I, uh, when I updated my Mac, I got the 256 um, solid state. So there isn't right, a ton so of small. working room. So when I get all my yeah. Photoshop files and everything going, I kind of start to, you know, start to right. s slow down a little bit. So the, the problem with that is that, to me anyways, is that it's a lot of work to back up to DVD. Yeah, and but and <laughs> you, can, you can miss stuff very very easily. Mm -hmm. DVD is good because if the reason that your computer or hard drive were to crash was an electromagnetic pulse, mm -hmm. then DVDs are not going to be as susceptible to that as as like your hard drive, right? Whether or not that would you know that would be like solar mm -hmm. flares, for example, which can happen. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of work. So mm -hmm. when was the last time you backed up your to DVD? Uh, probably about six months ago. Yeah, so six yeah. months of data would be lost if you lost that hard drive. <gasps> That's bad, man. <laughs> Maybe but I good that you're doing something, something like Category Five. And I, what I would learn. do, I'd probably get into a situation where you got two hard drives e external mm -hmm. and mirror them, like, but not in a RAID, but you have a second one that's the same or or bigger or whatever, and just make a habit of once a week copy everything from one drive to the next, and just like do it that way. Smart. Just to be easy. Well, then you've got a backup that's a backup of a backup. Cause, but, uh, yeah, I should mm -hmm. be doing more that's on true. DVDs. Uh, DVDs will degrade, though, too, over time. Huh. So Plus, when they're not used anymore. Yeah. Because we all know that's oh, going to happen. <laughs> that's the thing, too. Like, how many people backed up to floppy disk or zip drive? I have a right? whole bag of floppy disks. I won't float throw away because I have no idea what's on them. I finally, <laughs> I finally took that step. The big box of floppies took it to the dump 
and I felt a certain victory in turning it upside down and dumping it and shaking out all those discs. Oh man. I know, but I have no idea what was on them, and <laughs> like I know that you know it's nothing at this point. You haven't missed it for how many? Well, years at this so? point, you know, here we are. How many years later? It's not going to be anything that's really going to harm me. You know, it's mm-hmm. like like online banking. Then you know, are my passwords the same as they were when I had floppy disks? They no. could be. Oh, they're not. Reuse them as coasters, Agamotto says. Ooh. Take them apart and make frisbees. How cool is that? You know, in like 20 years, that's going to be the cool retro thing to do. <laughs> Are you using a, a pogo plug? I am. Yeah? Yep. Because there's another idea uh, suggested in the chat room uh, by Good Guy mm-hmm. is, for example, you get a pogo plug at, uh, at a family member's house or something, mm-hmm. and you could be backing up to your pogo plug. And right. then have it synchronized to your family members' right. house. Right, and then anything that happens to your computer at your place. It's You've got it at two yeah. places at once, right? So That's a good idea. That could be a good idea. A little mm-hmm. bit slow some for that first backup. Mm-hmm. But what I did is I brought uh, the one that was going to be off-site. I actually mm-hmm. brought it home. And did the backup here. I turned off encryption on the Pogo plug so that it would not go out through the web. Mm-hmm. It would only work internally so that it would be faster. Mm-hmm. Did my first backup, so it was huge. Mm-hmm. And it was just over the LAN because I had turned mm-hmm. off encryption. And then turned back on encryption, took the hard and drive, and put it on another Pogo plug off-site. And that synchronization process still happens with right. R-Sync. So that's cool. That's a good idea, too. Good rule of thumb, though, is if, if you have your hard drive crash, where is there another copy? And in your case, if it's six months old, yeah, that could be really bad when you're just doing school. Yeah. Especially yeah. with solid-state where it's... Uh, yeah, you can't get it yeah. back. <laughs> if it dies, you're like you're done. Yeah, yeah one um, of the disadvantages. I for do, sure. actually. You've yeah. got some projects, too? Yep. So what, would hap- <laughs> so what would happen if that electromagnetic I pulse would, happened? I would cry. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Point in case. Yes. Okay. Good question. Am I, get- am I getting through? Am I getting through? <laughs> I got it. Thanks yep. for the question, good guy. <laughs> Rev D. I Jenkins. feel horrible now. I'm going to rush home and start doing my project. I'm going to feverishly be <laughs> backing up. <laughs> you know what? Whenever, I, and I'm, I'm silly this way. Uh, well, one of the things that I wanted to mention tonight, I, I as a bit of a follow-up, we reviewed this a couple of weeks ago, and I took this to the cottage with me, and it was mm-hmm. fantastic. But one of the things is, for 12 bucks, I was able to buy a 16 gigabyte mm. SD card. For They're 12 so, bucks. 12 bucks. <laughs> so cheap these days, right? So what I had done is my camera, my digital camera uses SD cards. Mm-hmm. So I, every when we took pictures, at the end of every day, I put the card into the laptop, and mm-hmm. I made a copy onto this. Mm-hmm. No big deal, right? It's just another SD card. So I'm that particular about my mm-hmm. backups that even when I'm at the cottage, when we did the show Tuesday night, I had a, a copy on the server mm-hmm. that we had brought with us and packed up and taken to, to Silver Beach. Then I made a copy onto the laptop just in case something happened to the server and yeah. then plugged in an SD card and put a copy on the SD card. So I had three mm-hmm. copies immediately following the show. That's how, I think that's a good Method methodology to have and a good, like I, I mean that that's it sounds crazy but it's good because I could never really lose anything. Right. So, as you're working on your projects, you know uh, I've had it where I have access to no, no way whatsoever to back up stuff, so I email it to myself. Well, that's good. And then yeah. at least it's on the server, it's somewhere, and if I had a crash, I still have mm-hmm. a copy. So what you're saying is I'm not doing enough. No. If you, if you, <laughs> I, I th- let's look at it this way. If you had a fire, and not just you, if anyone, mm-hmm. if you at home, if you had a fire in your house, or your place of business, or wherever you're, you you keep your computer, uh, how long would it take you to be back up and running with everything that you had the day before the fire? So to me, that means, okay, do I have copies of all my stuff, everything, mm-hmm. family photos, videos. Uh, documents. If you're in school, your your projects, all that stuff, uh, work stuff, client data. Do you have that securely saved somewhere on a regular basis that it's up to date? So for me, I have all that, mm-hmm. and I'm very particular about that. But you need to think about it that well, way. What smart. happens if you had a fire, right? Where's your stuff? Mm-hmm. Smart. That's me. Good to think about. Well, yeah, think about that. <laughs> I, I I have to say it like on uh, on so many occasions because it's gonna ha- you know it's gonna happen. When's your hard drive gonna crash? You've got an external hard drive. When's the dog gonna pull it off the table? <laughs> right? Like seriously, it happens. So get it. Uh, True. I gotta get you back up. We gotta <laughs> fix this. We gotta fix this. 
hope everybody's had a, a great week and uh, looking forward to seeing you again next Tuesday, our last episode here at the studio uh, in, uh, in this place. It's kind of sad. It is a little bit, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's exciting. Really exciting. It's really <laughs> exciting. The new interim studio is going to be a, you know, a bit of a step and it's going to probably look the same to the viewers. Uh, but, uh, and then we're going to be building the, the, the new s- kind of permanent home of Category 5, which I'm very excited about, but have no idea how long that's going to take. <laughs> We've never yeah. done anything like this before. So, and we've got a contractor who says, yes, it can be done, but has not given us a quote. <laughs> so I'm scared. <laughs> One of those. We'll see yeah. what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, have a great week. Krista, thanks for being here. Yeah, it's good to be back. You have fun? I always have fun. You're going to have fun with that that's nice wine. Of course. Enjoy that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll see you uh, again soon. Yes. School's out in, later. You in said two weeks. Two weeks. So we'll see you very soon. Yes. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.